Well, today we have great news um, about the good news. And I know the, the perfect good news correspondent to help us with it. Welcome back to Grounded, Bob Lapine. Hey, Portia, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me on this morning. And let me just say, since we're talking about hair and 70s hair, I had hair in the 70s, so, you know, at <laughs> least there's that going on, right? <laughs> See, you know, but you're still looking good, Bob. You're still Thank looking you. good. You're, you're rocking it. <laughs> well, I want you to tell us about your book, The Four Emotions of Christmas. Yeah, this is a book, I, I was excited to sit down and write this because my, my audience for this book is really people who don't go to church regularly, but mm -hmm. people who experience the challenges of the Christmas season. I mean, I, I think all of us head into the season hoping for love and joy and peace, and we get into it and go, instead of love and joy and peace, we've got stress, and we've got expectations, and we've got sadness, and we think, what What's wrong with me, or why isn't the season delivering the way it's supposed to? And I wanted to write a book to help people understand that it's not the season that delivers love, joy, and peace. It's the person who we're celebrating who brings us love, joy, and peace. So if you're looking for the Hallmark Channel to, to deliver it, or your shopping experience, or baking Christmas cookies, you're looking for love, joy, and peace in all the wrong places. This is a book that will hopefully open people's eyes to the fact that there's really a spiritual solution to the the need that they have and what they're longing for in their heart. Well, I love what I'm hearing already. This sounds like a book for me. Um, you know, and I, I, I would say this, this book is a bit of a departure for you. You've written a lot on love and marriage. So what motivated you to write about Christmas? Well, I think this season of the year is the most easily evangelistic season. And uh, for for 15 years, I have been the, the primary teaching pastor at our local church. And I'm always looking for ways that I can encourage people to, uh, in a relaxed, non-threatening way, take the good news and share it with their friends. And so to have, th this is a book that's 80 pages long. You can read it in about an hour. Uh, and to be able to give your neighbor a book and a plate of cookies and an invitation to the church's Christmas Eve service or Christmas pageant. I just thought, how easy is that to do? Nobody's going to get offended because you gave them cookies for Christmas. And and this book is kind of like a giant track. Uh, again, they're, they're not, they might toss away a track, but they're not going to throw away a book. And who knows if late at night they'll pick this up and start reading it or Again, I, it's an easy, I think, a kind of a breezy book to read. Um, I, I just have a burden for us being more evangelistic during the Christmas season, and I thought this could be a helpful tool to make that happen. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I love this shot that we have of your book cover. That is super appealing. Like, when I look at that, it looks like something that I want, I want to read and I want to pass out. So um, I, I love that. I love that. I, Let me I wish you... I could take credit. I wish I could take credit for that book cover. I had nothing to do with it other than to look <laughs> at it and go, the publisher did a great job with this. And, and I agree with you. I think they did a, did a great job. Thanks. Look, they were inspired by your writing. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me this. What unique opportunities um, does the Christmas season present in terms of sharing the gospel with those who do not know Christ? Well, people who don't go to church regularly um, still think about, should we go to church at Christmas? Should we go to church at Easter? You probably heard the the idea of a CEO Christian. A CEO Christian is a church or Christmas and Easter Christmas, only. Easter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So to, uh, to know that folks are at least asking the question, should we do something religious at Christmas? There's that impulse. And it gives you a great opportunity to invite them to what your church is doing, which I think is the easiest invitation of all. And and um, people are not offended in the Christmas season when you point to what the season's about, when you talk about it being a meaningful season for you, a season that brings love and joy, a, a season where you focus. I mean, think about this. When we're walking through the malls at Christmas or through the Walmart, we're hearing great theology come through with, with songs like, uh, you know, God 
God rest ye merry gentlemen, remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. These are songs that people know and that they sing at Christmas time. So it's just, it's a, the, the, the season gives us a layup to be able to, to have a, a gospel conversation with somebody that we might be tentative with during another season of the year. Yes, yes. I love that. A layup. I love that. I think that's perfect, <laughs> perfect terminology. Um, well, you know, just in case there is someone um, watching or listening who doesn't yet know the gospel, or for those of us who maybe we feel a little awkward about sharing the gospel, can you share the gospel with us in a way uh, that you would with your with a neighbor with, or with a, a friend or you know someone that you would be ministering to i think I think that sharing the gospel starts with an acknowledgement that uh, there's a god uh, we we can look around and see the world we live in and and look at the beauty of creation and know that there's a God. This this can't all have happened through an explosion of gas. And and so to start and say, it's just clear to me that there's there's a, a, a God, there's a wisdom, there's something greater than us controlling our lives in the universe. And then to acknowledge that the, the, we live in a broken world. And I, I think to ask people, do you, do you look around and would you agree with me that the world is is broken? And then to say, as you look at your own life, would you say your own life there, there's brokenness in your own life as well. And most people will nod their heads and say, sure, life's not going perfectly. It's not going the way I, I hoped it would go. And and you say, well, why do you think that is? The, the Bible gives us an answer to why that is. The Bible says the reason that our the, the world is broken and our lives are broken is because we have rejected God and decided we wanted to live life on our own, with our own agenda, for our own purposes. And that that never works out well. And God knows that, and that's why he, at Christmas, sent his son, who, who came into the world and lived the life that we should have lived, a life that's focused on God and his agenda. And then he, he went to the cross, he died in our place, so that he could forgive the sin, forgive our transgressions, and could reconcile us into a right relationship with God. The, the verse that most people know, John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And I think to share a verse like that with friends and say, this is what God's promise is, and you can have that everlasting life that comes as a gift from God if you'll just believe in Jesus and say, I want my life to be centered on him. Um, and is that is that something you'd like to think about doing right now? That's, I think, a simple way to just share the gospel message. Yes. Amen. Amen, Bob. I'm ready to shout. Um, <laughs> it's just something about hearing the gospel that, oh, it, it changes you, man. How about this is going to be in my top three favorite good news segments. How, how about <laughs> that? Sharing the good news or good news. I'm with you. I'm doing it right here. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, we're going to help our, our friends, our sisters out today. One way we can share the good news is actually by giving away a copy of your book, uh, The Four Emotions of Christmas, um, and maybe with some cookies or, you know, uh, another nice little snack. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us where people can find it? Yeah, this is, if you go to the publisher's website, which is 10ofthose.com, the number 10, of those.com. One of the things I love that the publisher has done, you can buy a single copy of the book for uh, $6.99, but if you buy quantities, if you buy 10 of them, the price drops to under $5. And uh, our church, our church bought uh 500 of them, and we've got people getting them for $2 each at church. And, you know, stop and think, how many gospel conversations can you launch with a $2 gift like that? So uh, 10ofthose.com is the website, again, the number 10ofthose.com. Perfect, perfect. We'll drop a link to that in the chat and the show notes. Bob, thank you so much for being with us today. Love being with you. Great to, great to be with you, uh, and uh, hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. Same to you.